if you don't invest in yourself and you don't increase your skill set and you, you have the same level of ability this year as you do next year, you will make no more money. And I don't care what field you're in. Okay, so here's how you make $100,000 a year. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talks. Okay, I'm gonna break it down in two or three easy steps. Show me the money. That's it, brother, but you got to yell that shit. Show me the money. I need to feel you, Jerry. Show me the money. Jerry, you better yell. Show me the money. Step number one, nobody owes you anything. That is step number one. Nobody owes you jack. Okay, nobody, okay. And you don't owe anybody else jack okay? That's number one. So nobody owes you anything, you don't owe anybody anything. Number two is that if you're an employee working in a company and you're making, let's just say you're making $10 an hour and you wanna make more, you wanna make $30 an hour, $40, you wanna make $100,000 a year, whatever, okay? So first of all, you gotta realize, you gotta understand does that company that you're working in have the abilities in terms of opportunities for you to make that kind of money, okay? That's, that's the second thing you gotta find out is, okay, let's say you're working at Subway, okay? If you're working at Subway, last time I checked, I don't think the managers of Subway shops are making $100,000 a year. Maybe they are now, I don't know. So if, if I said it incorrectly, Subway, I'm sorry. But I don't think they are, okay? Maybe the regional directors that are managing, you know, 55 stores throughout the country, maybe that guy is making $100,000 a year, okay? So if you understand that, then you have to think with, okay, how do I get myself from this $10 an hour position to the six figure position. And the way you do that is you gotta invest in yourself, you gotta invest in your skill set, you gotta watch videos like this so that you can become smarter and understand that if you don't invest in yourself and you don't increase your skill set and you, you have the same level of ability this year as you do next year, you will make no more money. And I don't care what field you're in. I don't care if you're a real estate agent, I don't care if you're a salesman, I don't care if you're an admin person. I don't care if you're a medical sales rep. I don't care what field you're in. If you don't increase your skill set and your ability to communicate, to handle tasks, to handle people better, to understand how to sell yourself better, you will not make any more money. You have tapped out. You, you are like right there. You're right there you're not going anywhere. The people that are going like this, if you really investigate and look and you, you peel the, the curtain back, you'll see that those people are investing in their skill set. They are highly invested in their skill set. So you can ask that person, say, look, you know, most people don't have a budget for self-improvement. They don't, like they have a budget for how much dog food they buy, cat food, their grocery bill, but people don't set aside money for self-improvement, whatever that is in your field. It could be self-improvement to take a course to understand real estate law better or real estate selling or how to do certain things. But if, if you don't have that kind of set aside where you're like, hey, every, every year or every quarter, I'm gonna invest and do this so that I can better my skill set. Because there's, there's a tons of things out there in the world today that you can do, tons of things. There's tons of things that you can do to increase your abilities. Maybe it's how to be a better public speaker. Maybe it's how to handle, run meetings better. Maybe it's how to learn to negotiate better. Whatever those things are, right? So if you're not investing in those things, you won't make any more money. That's the next thing. The other thing is if you are investing in yourself and you are increasing your skill set, then what is what what you have to do is you have to utilize those skill set to make yourself invaluable to the company that you're working in. You've got to make yourself completely invaluable. I'll tell you that the people in my company that have made themselves uh, invaluable to, to me and the organization make a ton of money. They make a ton of money. Why? Because they've made themselves invaluable. What does invaluable mean? It means that they are so valuable that I am not willing to let them go. So I'm gonna throw whatever I can at them, which is what? Money, here you go, here's more money. Here's more 
perks. Here's, here's more fringe benefits. Here's more blah, here's whatever. Oh, you, you want this, you need this, here you go. Oh, you have this problem, oh, here's your solution. Right, I'm willing to do that because I don't want those people to have problems. What I've taken on as my own task is my senior core team, they don't have problems. I, I solve their problems for them because I want them focused on the business. So I make it my duty to say, oh, you have a problem? Here you go, now you don't. <laughs> now you got no problem. And I'm willing to do that because I don't want them to have a problem that's gonna distract them from their work. So to the employers out there, you wanna create a great team, you gotta think with, okay, how can I take care of these people so they don't have problems? And I'm not talking about problems, you know, they're fighting with their spouse problems. I'm talking about problems with money, problems with situations that come up in life that they don't know what to do with. That's what I'm talking about. None of my core people have that problem. They don't have those problems. And if they do, they know that I'm gonna help them resolve that problem as quickly as humanly possible so that they can then move on and be, be and continue to be productive. Because who wants to sit on an issue that could go away in, in three days and sit on it for three years? Because you know the right person or you have the ability to write a check. So if you have those abilities as an employer and as a CEO, it is your duty if you want to create the team. So I, I invest in my team a lot because they invest in me and I invest in them. So I think, you know, going back to now, okay, you're a $10 employee, how do you go from here to here? Well, put it all together, right? You're, you're not gonna make any more money if you don't invest in yourself, you don't increase your skill set. Don't go to your employer and think that 3% raise every single year, next thing you're gonna go from $10 an hour to $50 an hour. Dude, you're gonna work there a long time, okay? And no smart employer is gonna pay you to do the same job for 10 times the pay. <laughs> you serious? Thank you for what, standing there? So you gotta think with, okay, I gotta increase my skill set. And if you don't want to, great, then don't bitch that you're here. Just don't bitch, don't complain. It's not your employer's fault, they're not mean. Who cares if they bought another car or they went and bought a plane, that's them. They took the risk, they took the risk, you didn't. They didn't make any money while you did. And they're the ones that have their name on the guarantees, on the business. They're the ones that took all the risk they're the ones that have to make sure that all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed because if something happened to that business, the only person that's gonna be affected is them, <laughs> not you. Hey, they took the risk. You could do the same thing if you want to. You can quit your job, put all your shit in a box, walk out of the office, and you can go start your own deal. And if you're willing to do that, then you're, you're entitled to the upside. So a lot of people will tell me today, they'll say, wow, you know, Vic's making money and, 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 and he hasn't given me the raise and all this stuff, right? The reality is, is, well, dude, I may be making money now, but I didn't make any money. 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, some of 17, I wasn't making any money. I, I didn't see anybody coming to me then saying, hey, Vic, you know, I know you're not making any money. I know you're, you're struggling. Um, here's some cash. <laughs> that didn't happen, okay? So whatever business owners are making now after struggling for so many years, they're making up for years and years of time where they didn't make any money. So people will see today, they're like, oh, well, this person's making money and they're, driving a nice car and they're doing this and doing that. But yeah, but that dude wasn't making any money for five, six, seven years. And nobody was calling him saying, hey, uh, are you okay? Let me buy you lunch. Nobody was doing that. That's the truth. So as an employee, you gotta think, you gotta be smart and you gotta think like, okay, what am I doing? Am I adding value or not? You can't just expect to take from the well and not put into the well. That never works. And I do the same thing with my company. I always take care of the company so the company takes care of me. I don't think about individual people, I think about the group and I think about the company. What is good for the company? And I'll be the first one to tell you that if I didn't have the skills as a CEO and entrepreneur to take Blackstone and continue to grow Blackstone, I'd hire somebody else to do it. Ego aside, all that BS aside, I would hire somebody else to do it because I'd be like, hey, that's the best thing for the business. The best thing for the business would be for me to hire another CEO that had a better skill set. But that hasn't happened 
because there is nobody that is better than me at what I do. And every year I show that and demonstrate that in my, in my company stats, in the products that we have and the success of the business. If the products of the business and the stats were bad, then I'd be like, okay, maybe I'm not the guy, right? So if that day ever comes, great. Still best thing for the business. But I just know, I know me and I know like, that's never gonna happen. There's nobody that knows my business better than me. There's no, there's nobody. But if, you, if you're somebody else that's like, hey, I don't think I'm the guy. I don't think I'm the guy that can take it from 5 million to 20 million to 50 million. And there's not a lot of entrepreneurs out there that actually can. There's very few entrepreneurs that can start a business and take it from a startup to a company. There's not a lot of those people around. There's actually very few. I mean, if you look at Google, those two guys couldn't take it from a business to a company. They had to hire a guy, Eric Schmidt or whatever his name was. Bill Gates was able to do that. Steve Jobs was able to do that. Elon Musk was able to do that. But very few CEOs actually are able to take something from a startup and move it into a company because it's a different skill set. You may be great at the startup, great at the product, you know, innovation and rah rah and get, getting it off the ground, but then the operational expansion of it nationally or internationally is beyond your skill set. So good entrepreneurs will hire people like the Google guys did. They hired somebody and said, hey, we need you as a CEO because you're a seasoned guy and we know that you can take it to that level of expansion, right? So I think every, every entrepreneur has to have that talk with themselves behind closed doors and say, okay, are you that guy? Are you the guy to take it from 5 million to 10 million to 20 million, 50 million? And so, look, if you're, if you're a business owner and, and you're trying to take it to the next level and you're, you're frustrated because you can't expand, you can't scale, talk to people, reach out to me, you know, people that have expanded. Look, I've grown 55% over the last eight years. I think I know what I'm doing at this point. So if you haven't done that and you want to do that, hit me up.